pool and make an area that was initially sharp more fuzzy after the fact as well. So you can do use that technique to do facial hair, for example. First, I'm going to color the, 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 the beard section with low opacity green or greenish brown. And you can decrease the opacity of your marks so they don't appear in full opacity. That helps you get uh, uh, more of a blended color. So I'm first painting the beard section or the stubble section with that color. And then get the looseness tool and dial up the looseness. And when I paint over the model, it gets a bit more fuzzy in this area, giving a suggestion of stubble. That's a nice technique to use it to do hair or to use it to do grass in a scene. It's pretty useful. Going between painting and this side of the model is appearing more green because there's a blue light hitting the face. So that's what makes it look a bit greener. Click the arrow on the video to go to the next step. Now I go back to sculpting again. So you can jump between sculpture and painting. Using the smear technique, I just carve a few bits here and there to get again this imperfect result. It's nice to not have everything feel like it's made out of soft balls. The balls are, or the spheres were useful to start with to get the general shape of the model. And then you can start carving with the smear tool, just very small indentations like that for the chin. You can spend ages on that stage and really take the model to a very handmade quality. I didn't want to spend all the masterclass doing this technique as this is something that you will spend time and find your own marks, but I just wanted to give a quick uh, display of what it looks like to use it on top of a more careful process. Now I want to uh, color the eyes. So I'm going to first uh, darken around where the eye meets the nose, use some darker tones there. And also on this side of the eyelid, we also tend to have it being darker. Sometimes these are just shadows really, but I think painting a little bit of that accentuates the model and makes it look more convincing. To describe the eye in one sculpture, because in this uh, masterclass we're not doing the eye as a separate element that we articulate and have the eyelids close and open, this is more of an illustrated solution rather than uh, an animation-friendly one. So I'm just going to create a, a, a indentation for the eye, where the eye goes. And now, instead of adding the iris in the same sculpture, I'm just going to do a new sculpture just for this black bit in the center of the eye, so I can choose a different material, as we only have one material per sculpture. So for this section, I'm going to use a shiny material to get just that little bit of shine on the iris. So you can see you can have variety of materials in one model using this technique. You just create a new sculpture and then you place it, intersect it with your other one, and you have a variety of shininess. The, the, the main head is matte, and this part alone is shiny. Now I go back into the previous sculpture and paint around it with a dark color to blend it more and not make it stand out. 
Okay, that starts to work. Always looking at it from a distance. Once I'm happy with it, I take a copy of the sculpture that I did using the clone tool in assembly and I copy it back in the sculpture again to color around and blend it with the sculpture. There you go. We've got shiny eyeballs here or shiny irises that have a little bit more of a convincing result. I will continue to develop this area in the next step. To do the eyelashes, I still want to sort of tighten the eyelid a bit more because the eyelid is quite a complex shape. Initially, we started with the, the, the cylinders, but now that we're in this stage, we can cut further and just blend it more into a more flowing shape that is thinner and more convincing. You can spend much more time just doing that until the shape is completely right. It's always nice to work from a reference photo or even a reference sculpture that you have beside you so you can try to recreate that. Now, back in my sculpture, using a very loose cylinder that I've used the looseness dial on to get it to look as fuzzy as I can. And I'm just drawing the eyelash on top where the eyelid ends. And because it's a male bust, just try to make it thin enough to work. It's a fine tuning. You have to sort of keep looking, zooming out, making it smaller, making it bigger till it works. Again, using my mixed color to do the eyebrows using the same technique we used in the eyelashes very loose and it's because within the sculptures you can have the varying looseness that we used in the hair and the stubble now i'm adding those very small stretched cylinders with looseness on to give that result I'm not really expecting you to follow everything I'm doing here. This section is intended to give you insight into some sculptural techniques. Click the arrow on the video to go to the next step. Adding and cutting and carving the shape can go on till you really get to a very high level of detail that finds the right balance between the detail of the, the head you want to do and the sculpture stylization. Sometimes you will want your sculpture to be very soft and all realistic, or you want it to be very faceted and stylized. At some point, we will have many different sculpture and art classes to talk about stylization and techniques. The bottom part of the eyelid is much smaller than the top part. Just enough to describe the shape of the eye and it's towards the outside rather than it going all the way to the inside. And after I've added a few sculptural edits, now I'm just using spray paint, only to do the last part. So I can go from adding uh, sculptural uh, additions to just painting over the model. And every time you catch your model from a different angle, you can go and correct and modify. Here I'm making the, 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 how, where the hair meets the skull uh, or the, the head flatter so it flows better. 
that's the purpose of moving around so much that you keep seeing different angles and questioning them and refining them further. The, the coloring as well, you can keep layering, adding dark tones and then adding light tones on top of the dark tones to make them more blended. Here I'm just adding the muscle that makes the indentation of the, because there's a muscle that comes on top of the eyelid. The eyelid isn't that big. It, we do the eyelid huge first, and then in the very end, you cover it with that muscle that goes on top of it. And you can do that technique of softening areas as much as you like. But that takes our model to a more uh, uh, refined result and shows you a very quick insight into some more techniques that are useful to see. Now I will show you how to save your work from this scene. First, select both parts of the bust. Then open the assembly menu and hit group, which is in the context menu. Now, with the group selected, click Save as a new creation in the context menu and follow the instructions. So there we have it. That's the end of our Sculpture Masterclass. Uh, I hope you found it enjoyable and you feel inspired to make your own masterpieces. We're looking forward to seeing them in the Dreamiverse. Thank you.